The, the clues we have from anthropology tell us that humans were always interested in the skies, tracking the, the motions of the planets, for example, and giving names to the stars and inventing stories to try to understand what it means. When Galileo turned a telescope to the heavens and was able to see mountains on the moon, that was a turning point when they realized that the planets are worlds like the Earth is. And so ever since then, we've had this desire to fly to these worlds and to see what's there and to live on them. To actually get to the moon back in the day before we had advanced computers, they had to use slide rules in the office when they did all the calculations. It was ahead of its time. And they brought back rocks from the moon, they brought back soil, from many locations, and this was a tremendous boost in understanding how the moon formed and therefore also understanding the history of our entire solar system. So it was an amazing jolt of progress in science. A few years ago, I was working on preserving the Apollo sites, and we wrote a document, guidelines that we've published at NASA telling the world how to visit the Apollo sites without damaging them. And what we discovered is that the most important piece of scientific information at the Apollo sites are the bags of human feces that the astronauts left behind. So when they lifted off the moon, they didn't want to take all this extra weight. So anything they didn't need, they threw out on the ground. And so there are bags of poop sitting on the moon and those bags are full of bacteria because all the bacteria in our system. And this is an amazing scientific opportunity because we want to know, can life survive in space to go from planet to planet? So we want to go back and retrieve those bags of human waste and find out, did anything live in those bags? There is a a report by the Semiconductor Research Corporation and the Semiconductor Industry Association just about two years ago. The projection shows that computers alone are going to use the world's entire energy supply by the mid-2030s. We have got to solve this limitation of our planet. Um, we're not talking about hundreds of years from now, we're talking just a few decades. But the good news is that computing is the easiest thing to move into space because computers only make data and you can radio the data up and down to space. So um, the cryptocurrency and the blockchain companies are already starting to buy positions in space companies so they can start putting their servers into space. And there are companies working on energy to supply all those computers in space. So this is an example how we need to get beyond the limits of our planet and we need to do it soon in order to benefit the environment of our planet and also at the same time to have a more robust, more vigorous, more exciting civilization. I think the next frontier in space exploration is putting uh, outposts on the moon and learning to work on the moon to, to become Earth independent. So we would extract everything we need to live from the moon and from asteroids so that we can reduce and eventually eliminate dependence on planet Earth. And that's really important because if you want to have a civilization on Mars, you can't be shipping cell phones and everything you need from Earth all the time. You've got to build up the ability to use those local resources. So we've got to build the machines that'll do what life has done here on the Earth, and then also build the machines that do what the machines have done here on the Earth. Um, that'll be a little bit tricky, but we think we can get it done within a couple of decades. We think that if we start today, then within a few decades, we will have that complete supply chain off the planet, and then we'll be able to start scaling it up, and it'll be a revolution in civilization. <laughs>